Attaching the chain stays correctly between the dropouts and the bottom bracket shell is one of the most important and most difficult parts of building a frame. If things go wrong here, it can put the rear wheel out of alignment and really mess up the bottom bracket height, head tube angle, and seat tube angle. In this video, I'll be cutting the chain stays to length and brazing them between the dropouts and the yoke. The first task is to cut the chain stays to the correct length and check the fit. One thing about using both a yoke and low mount dropouts is that it makes the actual chain stay tubes really short. After checking the fit, I took some time to shape the yoke end so there's a smoother transition to the chain stay tubes. Then I ovalized the chain stays so they fit over the yoke tabs. and did some shaping on the front of the chain stays where they meet the yoke. Because the chain stays will be sealed on both ends, they need vent holes. Just like the main frame, when the gas inside the tubes gets hot, it expands. So there needs to be somewhere for that gas to escape. Each chain stay gets two holes so that when I soak the frame, the hot water gets in the tube and dissolves the flux inside the chain stays. Then everything gets a good shine with 80 grit emery cloth inside and out. I also rounded the dropout plug so there aren't any sharp edges hitting the inside of the chain stays. Before doing any brazing, I double checked the jig again. Making sure that everything is straight, centered, and aligned is pretty important here. If the rear end is off, then the rear wheel won't be straight. And with non adjustable through axle dropouts, there isn't any wiggle room if the wheel is a little crooked. After it's all cleaned and aligned, it's ready for flux, and then everything gets tacked together while it's in the jig. Once everything was tacked, I did another alignment check, both in and out of the jig, and everything looked good. The dropouts were centered and in line with the front triangle, and there was plenty of tire clearance. This is a 3 inch tire on a 27.5 wheel, but it should also fit a standard 29er wheel. One of my biggest concerns is if the wheel is vertically aligned with the rest of the frame. And at this point, it is 0 0.6 degrees off, which is close enough for me. I don't like to cold set anything, but I might give this a little push to see if I can get it closer to zero. After it's tacked, it gets moved to the park stand to finish the fillets. And here's where I made one of the bigger mistakes of this entire project. I removed the dummy axle. The dummy axle connects the chainstays so that the cold chainstay can support the one I'm heating up. 
Unfortunately, the combination of no dummy axle and a small tack on the yoke end caused the chainstay to get pulled down by gravity. I could visibly see the chainstay start to droop as I heated the area up and the tack got soft. So I attached the dummy axle to the cold chainstay, flipped the frame over, and heated the tack again until the chainstay drooped back down to the dummy axle. Then it was back to the jig for another round of checking the alignment. After double checking that the rear end was aligned again, I was back on track and filling the chainstay ends with bronze. At this point, I switched to a 332nd bronze rod for my normal 16th inch. The thicker rod makes it easier to fill the gap. One thing I'm considering changing for the next frame is to use thin sheets of 4130 to cap the chainstay ends. It should be about the same amount of work, but would require less heat and less bronze. This area gets extra soak time to remove the flux, along with a few rounds of dunking and draining to get hot water flowing in and out of the chainstays. Now that the chainstays are all one piece, it's time to clean up the fillets. And here's what the finished chainstay fillets look like. Not the smoothest or cleanest transitions, but as a certain wise bike mechanic says, it's good enough for who it's for. In the next video, I'll be cutting, fitting, and brazing the seat stays, which is always a fun step because it feels like you've finally made a bike frame. If you want to see how the rest of the build goes, hit the like and subscribe button so you'll see the next video when it's published. If you haven't watched the other videos in the series, go check them out. Thanks for watching, take care, see you next time.